Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course this is uh, Shackleton. Another very hot day in Ottawa. Temperature is close to 35, with uh, heat index over 40 Celsius, of course. In this video, and probably the next few, I'm going to talk all about the global methane budget. We know that um, methane is a extremely powerful greenhouse gas with a global warming potential of 34 if it's averaged over 100 years, um, about 80, 86 or so if it's averaged over 20 years, and it's not really talked about much, over, but over a few years the global warming potential of methane is um, approaching several hundred. So it's an extremely powerful greenhouse gas. Um, it's responsible for about a quarter of the warming. Of course, CO2 is the, is the most important greenhouse gas, but methane follows closely on its heels. The methane um, concentration in the atmosphere is, of course, much lower. It's measured in parts per billion than, than CO2 is, which is in parts per million. Um, but the lifetime and the lifetime of methane is relatively short. Um, you can talk about the uh, chemical lifetime or the atmospheric, tropospheric, uh, which is the lower atmospheric uh, level um, methane lifetime of being about nine years or so. But a lot of methane is also absorbed in soils, and um, there's some reactions also with chlorine. Um, you know, in the atmosphere, the main um, chemical that removes methane, that oxidizes methane, is the the hydroxyl radical OH. Also, singlet oxygen. So, if if you have ozone and and an oxygen is broken off the ozone, leaving you O2 plus the oxygen, and that free oxygen can also oxidize methane. Um, there's also processes in the stratosphere where methane is oxidized and that produces, the oxidation of methane produces water. So we're getting a lot more water vapor in the stratosphere, the upper atmosphere, uh, because of the higher methane concentrations there. And that's causing uh, these noctilucent uh, clouds, these blue clouds up high in the, in the atmosphere. Okay, so all of these factors um, I'll be discussing. And the gist of it is that about two-thirds of the methane um, is, 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 is uh, from the tropics. So the, 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 the planet's actually divided in, in the global methane budget studies into three latitudinal regions. Southern hemisphere up to, and then up to 30 degrees uh, north latitude, 30 to 60. Uh, north latitude and above 60, so the Arctic. Two-thirds of the methane um, is being produced in the, um, the first category, so southern hemisphere to 30 degrees. So the tropics is a huge produce uh, region of methane production. And then that's followed by the uh, mid-latitudes in the northern hemisphere. Um, there's a lot of fossil fuel emissions, fracking, etc. Wetlands are producing. And that's about one third of the overall methane that's being produced. And this study, at least, which is is valid up to the the methane data is up to 2017, um, and that indicates at least up until 2017, the the amount of methane being produced in the high Arctic was only about five percent of the total. So it doesn't look like the 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 methane the so-called methane bomb or the methane, uh, you know, we're expecting huge methane rises in the Arctic as we lose more and more sea ice and as the Arctic warms even more. And of course we have the Arctic temperature amplification effect where the Arctic is warming, uh, it's actually three to five times faster than the rest of the planet. Um, but from what we can see, at least up to 2017, which is where the global data sets go to. Um, and this, these papers um, on the global methane budget just came out in the last, uh, within the last month. So, but they, they, so they show that the methane bomb in the Arctic hasn't 
hasn't gone off yet, but it's a very episodic thing. Of course, you know, you're, most people remember uh, me discussing the Wadhams uh, paper talking about a 50 gigaton burst of methane in the Arctic, either either all in one year or over a decade, and the effects on on uh, human society. So, you know, it's 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 uh, it's it's a big threat, but it's a threat that hasn't hasn't been triggered yet. It hasn't gone off yet in the in the Arctic, at least up until 2017, according to this paper. So let me get into uh, the details. Before I do that, um, I've been reading this fantastic book, highly recommended, um, Tambora and the Year Without a Summer. So Tambora uh, was an enormous volcano that went off in 1815, and it basically caused uh, significant cooling around the planet uh, for the next two or three years. Um, and had an enormous impact um, on society. It plunged the world into crisis. This, is, uh, this book was written in German a few years ago and was recently translated and uh, just came out, um, just came out, I think, believe it was in 2019. Uh, yeah, it just came out last year. And it's by a historian, but it's all about the human impacts of the abrupt climate change that was caused by the volcano going off. And there's a lot of relevance to today to abrupt climate change that's occurring to raise the temperature up extremely rapidly and how that can affect society. So I highly recommend this book. It's, it's chock full of details. It's a masterly work. It's, it's excellent. Okay, so um, the other, a couple th interesting things too, just on a personal note, um, I've been doing some scuba diving in the last, uh, over the last week or so. I went diving, drove down to the St. Lawrence River, which is about an hour and a bit south of Ottawa, and went scuba diving on a couple wrecks uh, with my son, Neil. And of course, St. Lawrence being a very large river, very rapid currents, it, it, it added a lot of challenge to the uh, diving. Took some GoPro video. Um, I'm hoping to post some of that, but Neil was holding the camera and it's all over the place. It's all jiggly and stuff. So I don't know if I'll post it. We'll probably go on a couple um, wrecks again on, on the river in a couple weeks, couple different wrecks, and I'll make sure I hold the camera and, and post those videos. Um, Okay, so let's get back into the discussions of the, of the uh, methane. Okay, so this is just the, this is a recent global monthly mean methane, so from 2016 to, 20, to present day, and you can see the cyclical nature, although it's interesting, there's usually a double peak here. So it's uh, double peaking because there's structure, there's diff the, t the timing from different sources of methane throughout the year, it varies, but the you can generally see it's sloping upward. It's uh, it's increasing in a, um, in, in a uh, the slope is increasing, um, and you can see uh, this is uh, from 19 the beginning of the satellite era, about 79.80 to present day, and you can see uh, how the methane level was increasing very high fast, and then it slowed down here around 1999 to 2006. And then in, in 2007, it started increasing rapidly again. Okay, um, so I'll talk all about that. Um, this is from the ESRL NOAA government site. Um, if you just Google Global Monitoring Laboratory Methane, you can see the uh, trends here and also information on you know, the annual increases. Um, so in the 80s, it was increasing, you know, 10, over 10 parts per billion per year, and then it slowed right down. There was a very high year in 91, and then it slowed in 1990, it was, it was it's, uh, less, and then in the 90s, the early 90s, it, there was fluctuation. But in the 2000s, two, you know, early 2000s, it slowed significantly, 2000 to 2006, and then it upticked in 2007. Okay, so there's lots of good information 
on um, this particular site and you can also look at what's going on with uh, CO2 and with nitrous oxide um, and SF6 which is a powerful greenhouse gas, an extremely powerful greenhouse gas. So the levels of those you can see how they're increasing but we're focusing on the methane at the moment. Um, just a reminder, uh, this is my website, paulbeckwith.net. Uh, please check it out and please consider donating um, to my PayPal to support my research and my videos. I think I must have over 650 minute videos now on my site. You can get them all by uh, d also going to just Googling um, YouTube Paul Beckwith um, and you can find my channel and if you select videos here you can get all of the the videos and you can also search for uh, different topics I've covered most topics uh, over the years um, and uh, this is the uh, we're, we're right now we're getting a storm in the Arctic of course the Arctic sea ice is at record low for this time of year and it's getting slaughtered and it's very likely to drop between uh, the 2012 record and of course that has huge implications to society and I'll do a series of videos giving you an update on that uh, shortly but we're getting this arctic storm coming through um, the pressure is 973 millibar at the center of the storm it's expected to go to about 960 it could wreak havoc on the ice and rip it apart and make a bad make make the, the a record low year even you know blow things off the scale even even lower okay this is uh you know if you don't follow me on facebook uh please do and this is my twitter channel uh at paul h beckwith uh please uh follow me there i'll follow you back um okay so global methane so there was a recent article here global methane levels soar to record high so annual emissions of the greenhouse gas have risen by almost 10% in the past two decades, driven by agriculture and the gas industry. Okay, so livestock farming is a major factor in the rise of methane emissions. More and more people around the world are eating meat, so there's more and more cattle, and uh, the cattle belch and produce lots of methane about 90 percent of the methane from cattle is from the front end the rear end is about uh, 10 percent of emissions uh, you probably didn't know that most people think it's the the uh, rear end of the cows that are the big producers but it's the front end belches that produce 90 percent of the methane you know and it's happening because of anaerobic uh, decomposition these are ruminants so they have they eat a lot of plant matter plant matter sits in their stomach and it's basically fermented, you know, so, and that, so that the cow can digest it, and that produces the gas, the methane, which is belched out. And it's not just cows, it's also a lot of wild animal ruminants. So, but 10% rise over the past two decades is huge. And so this is record high, there's record high atmospheric concentrations of the powerful greenhouse gas methane. So the date I'm talking about is only up to 2017. The latest year for which comprehensive data is available, we reached 596 million tons of methane, and there's a group of scientists in the Global Carbon Project, and I'll show you those their their publications that came out recently, um, and explain the the highlights and lowlights and and some of the details of it. So, annual emissions have increased for methane by about 50 million tons from the 2000 to 2006 average driven mostly by agriculture and the natural gas industry. So there's two papers that I'll discuss. Um, and we've reached 1875 parts per billion uh, is the methane concentration in the atmosphere. That was last year. That's 2.5 times above the pre-industrial record. So this is a curve which I showed you um, from the ESRL site, you know, incre large increase flattening around uh, 2000 to 2000, 1999 to 2006, and then, and then a large uh, increase again. Um, 
The atmospheric lifetime, it's around 12 years, and I'll talk about that because it varies with latitude. Thanks for listening.